the fact that almost every entrepreneur right now under 30 thinks that a million dollar revenue business is like where it starts. Right? Like, like this thought of like, I'm gonna build a trillion, like when, why you got caught is you entered the land of trillion dollar businesses. Like, you're not building the next Instagram. You're not building, like, like people don't get it. Like there's like 18 of them. And everybody's like, I'm, you know how hard it is to build a consumer app? Yeah. <laughs> I know you know now. Yeah. You know, how expensive, how hard, how, you know, you know, people are raising 30, 40 million dollars in capital and failing with ease. Yeah. Cause it's hard. And so, and so like, I, I wanna start championing, like I think it's remarkable to be able to do something you like, have a six figure business, because I know you can have an incredible life on that. Like the average medium income in America is 51,000, 47, what's the number, you know. The bottom of the 1% wealth in our country, the richest country in the world, maybe China, I don't know, but like fucking we're in there, right? The bottom of it is 400 something thousand a year. Like if you make 400,000 a year and up, you're in the 1%, the 1% of America. But the talk, and the branding of entrepreneurship and business is like 28 million, it's so crazy. So I'm obsessed with practicality. You know, like if you're, you know, that's what I like. I like, I like that a lot. So. Unfortunately, you're the only one saying that. You see, you yeah. see everywhere, whether it's. Oh, I know. No matter what it is, every ad is about the car, the jet, the watch. Every Facebook the ad. It's romanticized. I need to make $100,000 in six weeks. It's just They don't do it, though. I mean, you did, you did it, right? I mean, how do you get the mindset of everyone? We, it's out there. You're putting out great content of what people can do. And they I, don't think, do. They I, don't, do I don't think we do. If I'm not worried about it, you surely shouldn't. Meaning, we just do. Your true stories are what matters. Like you guys can, you know, like, it, you know, once you get to that place where you're good with yourself and you're trying to give back, you only can give back in your truth. The philosophy of this right. company is built by me. Right. But, yeah, I mean, look, it's even funnier than that. Even look at this, like, all I'm really, like, even if it's me in the room, all I'm trying to do is figure out you. Like, if you're, if you have customers, it's about the customer. Like, you know, it's important, we, you know, sometimes it may seem heavier than others, only if my team feels that they need to use me as, in the same way that I'm trying to be a shield for you guys, like my great goal right now is to help people that are insecure use me as what to point to, to be in the argument at home. Well Gary Vee, like to me, I want people to say Gary Vee said, not because it feeds my ego, because it gives them courage to finally have the conversation. The permission thing, all right. So my team can use me if they feel like they need to. Tool the toolbox. Tool the toolbox. It'll let you grow, let you keep going. Because if it all Hundred percent, hundred percent. I just, limited. yeah, it just would have never been anything that matched my ambition. Right. Like if my ambition was far smaller, yet ridiculously huge, this would be what I would be doing for a living. I would just hang out with businesses and make a fortune. I'd make a million dollars a day. I'd make a million dollars a day. Enjoying the shit. I'd make a million dollars a day being put on a pedestal. Yes. And getting my ego stroked all day. Yet, I run a business that made 1.4 million in profit last year because I invested all back in the business. That's me eating my own dog food. That's me at 42 speaking about patience and building to the long term. Because you just don't go from zero to buying the jets on a singular move. It's not how it works. For me, it came natural to me because it's how I thought about my dad's liquor store. Because I was 14, I would stand behind the register and I would just, it was not that busy, so every customer you could have to focus on, like, I would just watch how they, this is what I've done my whole life. I watch people. So like, I would just watch how they would walk and I'm like, oh, they're all going to the beer section that's least less profitable. What if we like blocked it and made them go this way? I did that, it worked. Everybody picked up more stuff. It was crazy. Now you feel like you're in control. It's a fun job. If you're a UI UX designer, it feels very powerful. If you think about it, you're, you're, you're playing maze with humans. Yeah. yeah, the reason I asked that too, I've been through about 12 so far and they're, they're, none of them have worked out. I'm on the next one now. And you know what's tough, right? It's even more tough with design. Like the biggest thing if you want to scale, let's say you just wanted to do exactly what you're doing 
and the answer is scale. It's about, it's not being the judge and the jury for the client. Mm-hmm. Like your designers having to get through you before they get to the customer is your biggest vulnerability. Okay, that's exactly what I'm doing right now. Cause I'm like. It's, can I give you a real insight? Yeah. It's ego. I think I'm really good at what I I get it. (laughs) And and, and guess what? You may be. I don't think anybody here gives better marketing advice when they're with a client, but that's not what my clients are paying for. They're paying for better marketing advice than the alternative. What Berkshire was doing with fucking McGarry Bone or BBDO or whatever, the good news is it's way better with us now. If I did it personally, it'd be better, but that's not what we're selling here. And that's what you need to wrap your head around. So it means like 80% is good enough. As far as your employees. Here's the best part. Some people hate your shit too. <laughs> like it's not about 80 per- you've got it. Yeah. It's about understanding that it's a subjective call. That's right. I'm just unemotional when people. A lot of like stress. It will relieve a lot, wait till you taste it. Now it went through your head, you're like that makes, oh wait, that's so a different way to look at it. With the clients, nothing's going through. But what you need to do is make sure that you don't undermine your employee. So a lot of people listen to me on this and they're like that makes sense and they're pumped, then they hire, then they stop doing it differently. But what they're doing is they're subtly undermining their own employee because they like the feeling that the client thinks they're better. Oh. It's ego. Okay, that makes sense. It's ego. Ego is killing people. You know, it's funny, I'm such a front man for my company and I have my personality, but again, like, I promise you, Babin's biggest insight will be like the humility more than the ego or the lack of like touching everything, the autonomy. So like, not only do you have to let it go and let somebody do their thing and you shouldn't even, I mean, the only reason you should approve is if something's completely off the reservation. Do you should even look at it before? Only if it's completely off the reservation. So I think I watched Babin's first four, seven, nine, help me here. Videos? I mean, more than that, but. Because it was, I was watching all the Daily Vs back then. Yeah. Took me a little while to like let go with Daily V because there's so much sensitive information. Right. Um, so, but I have now, which is crazy town because we're filming some shit. The youngsters here are on their journey, like you and I look at them like, you should be putting in the fucking work. But we've been putting in the work for 20, 30 years. It's like, fuck, we have to put in the work? Yep. Sure do. You gotta put in just as much. They need to put in the work because they need to establish putting in the work. We need to put in the work because we can get caught into our lazy habits and the next guy or girl is right behind us ready to put us out of business. This is capitalism. That's why I hate capitalism in America in its current form, which is you work your ass off, you kill somebody, you're, it's a dog eat dog world, and then you become rich and you wanna use your money to not allow it to change so you can hold on to your money. We're in fake capitalism in America now. Old dudes are trying to change the rules so that they can keep the money because they don't want the young lionesses to take their shit. The thing that I live in is yep. practicality. Yep. Uh, you're driving fast, one-handed, fucking being ridiculous, lights go on, you shit your pants, you slow down, it drives past you, you're like, fucking thank God, <laughs> right? And then you are kind of chill for like about 12, 15 minutes, and then definitely by tomorrow, and most likely by the end of that trip, you're back, right? You go to the doctor, your blood test is weird, they call you back in, you fucking eat healthy that day, you fucking are scared shitless, you like tell people you love them, you're like doing everything right, false alarm, three days later you're back. The thing that I think I'm taking a lot of pride in, and this is the internet, this isn't that I'm more special than other people that had ambition to communicate before me, it's that the reason I think I was able to, am creating more results, it's because I'm consistent. Mm-hmm. Okay. And you made it very clear that the goal shouldn't be, I want to make a, like a million dollars when I'm 25. You know, it's just like I realized. But I made, but I made it. You know, and listen, some people maybe you heard it from the first podcast and the first video, or maybe like 99.999 percent, it was the first piece of content that made you go down the rabbit hole, that then got you stuck and then I pounded you for 187 days in a row and then it was like, wait a minute, that might be right. Cause that's what it is. That's true. That's exactly <laughs> <laughs> That's it, right? Yeah.
You know, because it can't, it can't. There's no, there's no one piece of content. That it, even like the song you heard from the Rolling Stones or Martin Luther King, it's yes in hindsight, but it's just the seed. Because far more extreme versions don't change us. Back to health scares. So that's the beauty of what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to gather all this attention to keep it for a long enough period of time that it actually makes an impact. And that's why it's, I think I'm resonating. Cause it's, you change up your stories and your content and your subjects so often to keep everybody's attention? You know what's funny? I think that is actually less strategic and more just who I am. Which is probably why I'm like, like that goes down to like other things, which is like, you know, that's probably why, that's probably why I was bad. Like I don't keep myself interested. And I'm also, you know what's funny that I've started realizing about myself is I'm a big time listener. Even though like on my shows I interrupt people. And like people like, oh, you know, like you were making a joke about yourself. You know you're gonna wanna talk, it's how you do things. But I'd, I'd be surprised if there wasn't some listening from it. I talk so much to create listening opportunities. I'm throwing things at you and watching how you're reacting or what are you gonna bring up, which gives me white space to go into, which manifests in a new piece of content. Even the one I just posted today, like, you know, I've kind of gotten to in the last couple of weeks this idea, and it's been an idea before, I've said it before, but I'm hot on it, of like, you're gonna find what you're looking for. You wanna find negativity, you're gonna fucking find it. Let's go, let's fucking put on fucking CNN and Fox News, let's go on Twitter, and like, we could all fucking think the world's gonna end tomorrow. Or, you could go, you could go search on Twitter right now, thank you so much for, and just see unlimited stories of like, you know, you know like unlimited stories of kindness. Like go search what was, was so kind to me. Go search on Twitter right now, was so kind to me. I don't know, you're just gonna see all sorts of things. Like it was really nice that this person was so kind to me. Like, like helped me today or like, like so I'm fascinated right now of like you'll find what you're looking for. You're looking for optimism, you'll find it. You're looking for, you know, and that's why back to mindset or the seed or like what I'm trying to get through. Like, yeah, I mean, I think the thing that I'm trying to do is take on the responsibility that I have a mess, that I'm a personality and a human that will always, has always had the ability to resonate with youth and with elderly. Like, I, I would say I do better with 70 to 90 and 15 to 25. And I, you know, obviously, which is interesting because a lot of, most of this room isn't that. But that is where I win because if you're super wisdom out, you can see through everything and you've got me pegged quick. Nine year olds understand me always the quickest. And then 15 year olds just get excited by my communication style. <laughs> and I don't really have a horse in a race. I don't care why somebody thinks I'm cool or worth listening to, I could care less. I just want them to listen because I know what my intent is and I know that I can win that game and I know I can keep their attention. And that's more out of, it's less strategy that I'm gonna change it this Thursday. Babin will tell you, probably can answer. It's literally like, we're living, I'll say something. I get excited in my own shit. I'm my own number one fan. (laughs) It's just true, I'll say something like, oh shit, that's fucking rad. And then I'll put it in my head. And then again, Bab and then Iris and DRock see it because they'll see it. Like they now understand how I do it. I've learned through their eyes how I do it, which is I'll say something, I'll like, like how it feels. Free. What's that? Like tuition free in your bag. Yes, yeah, that, exactly, stuff like that. Or like something in here, I'll like the way it feels and then he'll see, I'll use it again tonight. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. For a different, and then you'll, you'll, all of a sudden I'm doing it and then like three weeks later, it's the thing.